times you can say no, man. A lot of times in my own life I can look and say, okay, God, I believe in you. I'm a Christian. I'm portraying you. But this area of my life at this point in time in my life, man, is not portraying you. It's not mirroring your word. Right? And I have to go back and I have to check myself and say, why, God? At times do I say that I believe you? I've committed my life to you as a preacher, but there's times where I live like you're not right there next to me. Like the Bible says, he'll never leave us or forsake us. There's times I live like that's not true. And, and, and man, it, 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 can, it can make me, if I'm not careful, walk in shame and guilt. Anybody relate to that, man? Anybody ever walk in shame or guilt in their life, man? I know a lot of us do. But, but the definition, again, someone who believes in God but lives as if he doesn't exist. Someone who believes in God yet does whatever they want to do. Someone who believes in God but says, I'm going to do it this way because that's the way that I think it's the best way to do it. Anybody ever struggle with that? Two of us can't shame. Praise God. We're going to have church in here tonight, man. Man, why? Because we, we have control problems. I'm surrounded by control freaks everywhere that I go. People that want to do things their way, man. And, and I get it. I'm guilty of it. And we go in the home and me and Alicia are very both strong-willed, you could say. I'm going to put it in the, in the good terminology. We're both strong-willed. Uh, or you could say hard-headed or whatever. And so there's times where she thinks her way is going to work right, right? And if I was smart, I'd say, yes, ma'am. And just do it. And I'm pretty sure it's in the Bible somewhere. It helps me live long and happy. But uh, I should just say, yes, ma'am, you're right. Because that's like the voice of the Holy Spirit in my life that helps and directs and wants to see me succeed, man. But, man, there's times I just can't get over it. I feel like I need to do it this way. And we struggle with control so many times. Control, and we control God right out of the picture. We say we're Christians. But we nudge him to the side to the point where he's not even existing in our life at a point where he's leading us and directing us because we've got our ears closed off to him because we like to have control. Are y'all with me? So I want to talk about that, man, those who believe in God but don't want to trust Him fully. We believe in Him, but we just say there's just these areas that I'm struggling. How many would honestly say that you like to be in control? Now that I said it, let me ask it one more time. <clears throat> Three more people. Praise God. Lord, help them, Jesus. To get to get this under control, man. You say, I'm not raising my hand. Why? Because you're in control. That's why. That's exactly why. So, man, if you struggle, I, I was going to bring a whole bunch of those things out tonight, but I may not, man. I just want to show you. Because God's kicked my butt on this the past couple of days as I've been studying, man, and, and looking into us, man. Places where we, where we believe in God, but we don't trusted him, man. And, and we saw how many hands went up, and if your hand didn't go up, you laugh. That makes you guilty as well. So if you find yourself moved to want to raise up the person's hand next to you because you think they're a control freak, you're the control freak for sure, man. You're the one that has a control problem. If you're in here thinking, I'm going to raise his hand, you're the one with the control problem. I have those for days. I could go over me. God showed me in like 12 areas where like, nope, that's you. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I gotta I guess I gotta repent of that, man. But we all like to be in control and, and I believe in God. Man, but there's times I don't want to surrender everything to him. Is anybody with me, man? God calls us a masterpiece in Ephesians 2.10. And I teach the students all the time, man. If God's a, if God's painting a masterpiece with you, what do you have to do for it to be beautiful? For it to be for it to make sense, for it not to be a bunch of jumbled mess, man. What do you have to do? You gotta give him everything he needs to paint it, and you don't touch it. You surrender it to him. God, here's the paint. Here's the palette. Here's my life. Here's the paint that represents the bright areas and dark areas of my life. But God, here's every brush. Right? Here's the ones that bring shading, that bring dark areas to my life. Time that I don't understand. Here's that brush too, God. That relationship. Oh. God, here's that brush, that music. God, here's that brush, that substance. God, here's that brush. It's a constant, constant, everyday struggle to surrender every brush to God so He can paint something beautiful with your life and with mine. And He will, man. But there's too many times that we want control so we hold on to Him. And God's a perfect gentleman. I know a lot of people think that God's going to make you throw into all kind of... God's a, the Holy Ghost is a perfect gentleman, and He will not force you. He will not force that brush out of your hand. He steps back, and if you say, I'll, I'll take care of this one, He says, okay, have at it. And He knows that His grace is real, and He's got a good eraser. 
and I'll do it in time, but I realized I just took something so beautiful that God was making and I made it look so ugly with one decision, with one word, with one lack of area that I didn't trust God. I had to come calling back to God and say, Lord, here's that brush. Take it and take the damage that I made with it away, God. Forgive me. Change me. we got to get to a place where, where we release control and let God and trust God enough, man, and obey God enough to let Him do something beautiful in our life, man. The world doesn't need any more Christian atheists. It has enough. I've seen enough out there, man, that say I believe in Jesus, but live a totally different way. My Jesus, as we sing that song, you know why it's so personal to me? Because I represent Christ, the Christ, the man, as it says in 1 Timothy, Jesus Christ. I represent Him. And so when I see somebody that represents my Jesus, that I've, that I've developed an intimate relationship with, and so have you, when someone represents my Jesus in a way that portrays Him different than what He should be portrayed, it messes with me. And God says, man, sometimes that's you. So you need to deal with it. And you need to preach a message on this. And I want to dive in today. And I want to start in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 23 is where I'm going to start. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 9, in verse 23. And right here in the scene, man, uh, God's people are about to cross the Jordan River. And they're about to go into the promised land. Right, But God wanted them to understand they weren't receiving this blessing because they were good. Right? I don't want you to hear that, man. They weren't receiving this blessing because they had done everything right. They were receiving it because God was good. Now here's how the story goes. Listen, verse 23. Go up and take possession of the land I have given you. He says, but you have rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. <coughs> you did not, if you have it in your Bible, you did not what? There's two things that it says. What was it? Oh man, believe or trust and obey. You didn't believe, you didn't trust, and you didn't obey. You wanted to have control in some area, and it caused you not to trust me, and it caused you not to be obedient to me. So I'm letting you come into the promised land. I'm giving you something great. But I want you to know it has nothing to do with you because you didn't trust and obey. I'm doing it because I'm good and I'm faithful. It says in the Word of God, even when we remain, even when we are unfaithful, He remains faithful because He cannot deny who He is. Right? That's what the Word of God says, man. So God is faithful to these men and these women and these people that were traveling, man. And He said, I'm going to let you go in there. But, but man, I'm going to do it not because you're doing things right. Not because you believe. Not because you trusted. Not because you obeyed. <clears throat> but because I'm good. The problem for so many of us is, is we have what we call a, a partially surrendered life, man. One of the best messages I ever heard preached down south was, man, are you going to let the blood be applied to every area of your life? And, I, and when I listened to this message and this man preached that, he talked about this surrendering things and letting my money, letting my mind, letting my emotions, all of it be surrendered to God. Man, let it be get covered by the blood. But I think about that when I think about these scriptures right here that we're talking about. Part, many of us have a partially surrendered life. I want, you to, I want you to really take an evaluation of yourself as I talk about this tonight, man, because that's what I've been doing. I've really been looking, man, and <clears throat> into my life and seeing what I need to change, man. We're going to give God some parts of our life at times. We get to the place where we say, God, I'll give you some parts of my life, but I'm not going to trust you with everything. I'm not going to give you every single thing. Fellas, coming in and say, I want to have church. But I'm not going to give you everything, God. I'm just not going to do that, man. And, and people get to that point. It's called a partially, a partially surrendered life. There's times we say every one of us want to be in control. And this tends to bleed into our spiritual lives. Now, we joked about it a little bit a moment ago. But when we have problems letting go of control, which is almost every single one of us, in some way, shape, or form, we struggle with this, man. The more I counsel with people, the more I look into the Word of God, the more I study myself, I realize I have control issues. I realize, man, if, if we're driving a vehicle, I don't even care if it's your vehicle. 
I want to drive. <laughs> like, Amen. I don't like anybody else driving. Why? I just don't. So I'll drive your vehicle. I'll drive my vehicle. Billy just said, you want to, you want to drive? Of course I want to drive. You know what I'm saying? It's a control thing. I want to be behind the wheel. I want to be in control of the wheel. I want to know what temperature the, the AC is on it. I don't want you to touch it. Why? Because it's mine. And, and I'm controlling that thing for a monthly plan. And man, up the TV remote. Where's that going? Right here. Why? Because I like to be in control. It's an act of surrender when I say, here, Alyssa, you find something. It's just a peel. My wife got her fingers off. Why? Because of control. Man, so many times out in public, someone cuts you off or someone does something and you don't act so Christian. Why? Because it was out of your control. And we fight so many things and we get mad over so many things that we think we have control over. But we really don't, man. And we push God right out of the picture when we do that, man. We push them right out of the picture. And this tendency to control bleeds over into our spiritual lives, man. There's things that it's not hard for us to trust God with. And then there's things that seem like they're impossible to release to God, to let go to God. And, and I want to read a passage of Scripture to you out of Proverbs 3. Y'all just listen to it. Many of y'all know this portion of Scripture. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. This is the PSD version. If y'all just hang with me, man. Bible says, trust in the Lord with how? With some of your heart and lean not on. Oh, so I'm reading the PSV. And lean not on your own understanding. And some of your ways acknowledge Him and, and you can make your path straight. Is that what it says? No, that's definitely not what it says. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 through the partially surrendered version. That's, that's that <laughs> version. That's what that's called. But sadly, many people are living according to that version that I just said. And I know many people, we say, I surrender all. And many different times we sing these songs and do this, man. But we're still not fully surrendered to Him so many times. It says, it says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with what? All your, all heart. your heart. And then what? Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge no. Him. Not some of your ways? No. No, it says in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He'll do what? Direct your path. He'll make your path straight. What I said didn't sound like the Word of God, and it wasn't. But but it's the truth for so many people that are trying to, 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 to wrestle on life on their terms, man. And they're trying to get through life grasping control of things that, that they shouldn't be grasping control of. And, and it's a passive, a, a scripture that a lot of people that I see live their lives by every single day. They give some of their heart, right? Not all of their heart. Not every ounce of their being, man. And so they end up struggling in life. And, and, and if you're taking notes, write this down. I, I'll give you, God, I'll give you some things. But I'm not going to give you everything. That's the lie that we have to get away from. That's the truth. That's the truth that says, that comes from the enemy that tried the false truth. That says, man, you can do it your own way. You can try to get through this on your own. But with God... We have to get to the place where we say, God, I'm going to give you every single thing in my life. That means my emotions. That means I can control. Hold on a second. You mean that when that person comes to me and I want to respond, I can control that? <laughs> Absolutely you can control that. That's 110% in your book bag. That's your, that, your emotions are yours to control. Nobody else's, man. That's Galatians 6. And it talks about that's what's in your backpack. That's what you carry, man. So you mean that I can get to the place where I can submit my emotions to God. I can trust Him enough that He's going to empower me enough that He gives me the ability to be able to get riled up and be able to control my tongue, my words, my actions, my posture. I can control that. But we get into situations, man, that we just feel like what? Somebody has to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So what do you do? He snaps that paintbrush out of his hand. Hold on, God. She needs to hear. Hold on, God. He needs to hear. Hold on. They need to feel what I'm feeling. They need to understand what I'm feeling. The Bible never says we're to express our heart. It says we're to guard our hearts. That's what it says. We're to guard them, man. So, so you think, <laughs> and you say, God, I need to give you all things. I need to give you everything. But too often, this is our statement. God, I'll give you some things. 
but I'm not going to give you everything. In some way, it defines every single person listening to this message at some point, place in your life, man. I'll give you some of the things of my life, God, but I can't give you everything. I'll give you an hour on Sunday morning, God, but Friday and Saturday night, that's my party time. That belongs to me. That's when I go relax and let my hair down and do some of those things. God, that's my time. God, I'll give you five minutes in the morning. I'll give you the first of my time. So God, when I get up in the morning, <coughs> I'm going to give you the first ten minutes of my day. My first my first time of, of, of the day. I'm going to give you that, God. I'll give you the first when it comes to money, when it comes to my finances. I, God, I'm going to give you the first of my time. I'm going to be thankful and I'm going to meditate on things that are true, but when it comes to finances, God, I'm not going to give you my first. I'm going to make sure my bills are paid. Then, then if I have left over, I'm going to give God. That's a lot of people's philosophy in the church, man. That's a lot of people, man, where God said, no, give, right? And I'll give back. It's, it'll be running over, he said. It'll be shaking. It'll come together. It, it'll, be, it'll be poured out in your life, man. Give. But so many times we say, God, I'll give you the first of my day. But you can't have the first of my finances. Things are tight right now. Uh, Who I ever relate to that before? Let's be honest right now. Thank you for being honest, man. Let's be honest today and say, look, listen, man, there's things in my life. Oh, man, I don't know if I can do that. God, I'm going to trust you with my salvation, God. I'm going to give my heart to you because I need forgiveness. And then I'm going to go to heaven. I heard about heaven and I heard about hell. And hell that says there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and lake of fire. Man, I don't want to go there. I want to go to heaven. So that I, I trust you for salvation, for fire insurance. So I don't go to hell. Uh, but man, my kids, their present time and day and, and their future and, and all that kind of stuff, God, their agenda, that's going to be set by me, God. I'm going to determine what they do, where they go. I'm not going to let you determine that, God. I'm not going to give them the freedom to have a relationship with you and hear the calling of God in their life and act on it. I'm not going to try to control them. God says, man, you got to let your hands off. And you got to say, here they are, God. And you bless me with them. You own them. You own everything, God. You bless me with them. So, God, we give them back to you. Man, we surrender them to you. We trust you. It's your good and your word that says that we train them up in the way they should go. When they're old, it won't depart from them, man. Man, God, we have to trust that. But so many times we say, ah. But then man, so many people that in church got such a tight grip on them. We don't give them the freedom, man, to, to express their little hearts and, and to express their little their little voices as they hear Jesus and as they as they hear about the stories and, and as they see things in church, man. Being able to let them express that and show their uniqueness in Christ. Too many times we try to hold on to them. I've been to baseball field after baseball field, football field after football field, wrestling mat after wrestling mat. Then, man, I hear people scolding and screaming at their children for bad plays and for making mistakes. And it's like, man, let go of that control. Quit trying to beat through your kid who you didn't be with, with your own decisions, man. Just let them go. Have fun. Let's surrender to God and enjoy it. Be thankful that God's given us the ability, but we try to grasp hold. I'm guilty of everything that I'm talking about at some point in time in my life. The things that I'm sharing tonight, man. Here's the thing. God has a purpose for you, and you'll never fully experience it if you're holding back. God has this purpose. Listen, each and every person on the sound of my voice, God has a purpose for you. A great, big, giant purpose that isn't just getting saved and sitting in a church every once in a while or once a week, man. God has a gigantic purpose for you. But the thing is, you'll never experience it. You'll never fully understand it. You'll never fully get me. You look at someone like me or Dave who's been serving God <laughs> for a long time and you'll look at Alicia and you'll look at others that are that are a staff and getting and you'll be like, I don't fully understand them. And then you start to understand that you got a purpose and you got a calling and you're unique and you're who you are for a reason. And the things that happen to you, good and bad, are for the furtherance of the gospel so people can see that God's good and He can change anyone, man. Every one of you has a purpose, but there's so much that's holding you back because you haven't fully experienced what I'm talking about, man. If you, if you hold anything back from God, you're at a brick wall in your faith journey. If you hold anything back from God, anything, 
God, here I am. I'm just broken. I'm hurting. I'm ah. If we hold anything back from God, we hit a brick wall in our faith journey. I don't know about you, man, but I, I've hit a couple brick walls and it didn't go too good. That brick wall was pretty tough, man. I've hit it so many different ways. You can't even, you can't, I've hit it with vehicles. I've hit it with everything. I beat my head against them. I've tried every way to get through those brick walls and they're just not budging until I simply surrender. I used to sing praise and worship with my fist balled up like this in the air. And I had a pastor call me out one time and he said, come here. He said, man, you're trying to praise God, but you're holding on to so much. That's why you can't open your hands. And I was like, I looked at my, they were white knuckles like that. And I was like, he said, man, you got to learn to surrender to God. Your posture is showing what's going on on the inside. You want to do it, but you just can't let go of those last couple of things that just have made sense to you. And it's made you get through life to this point. It's the only thing that makes you get through life in those dark areas. And you're scared if you let it go, man, maybe you're going to crumble. This is the one thing you know, even though it's not right. This is what you know. This is how you know how to deal with anger and pain. And I said, God, I don't want to let that go. I don't understand it any other way. I'm vulnerable any other way. I'm open to get hurt any other way. If I throw my hands up, God, that's vulnerable. It hurts. I can, I can get hurt. Somebody can do me dirty and it would hurt. Did that happen? It sure did happen a couple times, man. There's times I've been devastated by people that I thought was like family to me, man. There's people that have hurt, that have said things, man, that have blown my, my mind. There's things that have happened, man. It's not all been peachy and fun, man. It's not all been good, but I've been surrendered through it, and I've learned over and over and over again to throw my hands out and surrender and quit hitting those, those brick walls in my faith to where God says, I can take you so far on your faith journey, man. I can take you so far. But we get stuck at these brick walls, man. <clears throat> Even if it goes the way we think, it needs to go at times. We hold on to what we think is best, man. And God, I believe that you listen to people's prayers. It can mess with your mind at times. How many have ever said this? God, I believe you hear people's prayers. I believe that Josh heard from God. I believe that this person did, that that person did. I believe that you're a God of grace. I believe that your mercy is real having a hard time believing it's real for me. I have a struggle with that, man. I sure have. God, I believe you're a healer, but I don't know if you could heal me. Why? Uh, maybe because I did this in the past. Or maybe because I said this in the past. Or maybe God, because I'm not as pure as that man is. He's been serving God for, 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 for this long, God. Maybe I'm not. Man, if we get to a place where we believe it, but we don't believe it for us. There's many people that believe they call me John. Man, I gotta send my son down there, or my brother, or my cousin, or my husband, or my wife. They need prayer, John. They need prayer. And I've seen demonic spirits cast out. I've seen all kinds of things happen when people have been brought. But the one thing, man, that, that, that comes back to me every single time, over and over and over again, is why didn't you pray for them before you ever brought them to me? Why didn't you get out oil and lay hands, believe God, quote the word of God, and pray for them? fast for them. Here's what they say. But well, I have some things in my life that I need to deal with and I just didn't think God was going to hear my prayer like He was going to hear your prayer. With the span of God. And I'm like, my righteousness is filthy rags just like yours is without Jesus. We both put on the righteousness of God today. Right? I don't put on some different cult or anything else, man. I put on the righteousness of God. That's what you put on. This one Christ, one righteousness, that cleanness. Righteousness means cleanness, man. You put on that cleanness of God. Then I'm able to put that on. Then I'm able to start to trust Him for great things. But too many times, they start to mess with people's minds. Then they say that I trust you with some things. Again, a Christian atheist. I believe you, God. But I just can't trust you completely for that for me in my life. I don't think that you're going to hear me because of what's been going on. I was going to put a picture up there of this guy, but his name was Charles Blondin, and he was back in the 1800s. He was a, a tightrope walker, man. They made movies about him and everything else, but he walked across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. It's, it's 160 feet up and a quarter mile, like 1,100 feet in distance, something like that. A quarter mile over Niagara Falls. This man tightropes, tightrope walks over that with ease gets to the other side, and they said, all right, now what? You did everyone's cheer, and they're excited. Man, this is a crazy feat. I can't believe this just happened. Now what? And he's like, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it on stilts. True story. He did all this. 
Right? Then he gets stilts. Walks across over the Niagara Falls on stilts on a tightrope. Then he comes back and they're like, whoa, what are you going to do next, man? <clears throat> so he comes back again, right? He's accomplished it. He comes back. He gets in a burlap sack like a, like pop races. You know what I mean? The little sacks. He walks across it on one of them burlap sacks. He gets over there. They're like, man, you did it. It's so impressive. What else? Now he comes over. He gets a little grill with a portable grill. Walks out. Kneels down, cooks an omelet right in the middle of the tightrope, eats it, gets up, walks the rest of the way across, man. Right? It's crazy what he did. He did all these things. Then they said, now what? What's next? Then he gets a wheelbarrow and it's full of potatoes. And he pushes it all the way across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. This guy was doing great things, right? Then they get to the end and, and there was a guy that was a reporter that's on the other side. And he says, man, this is so awesome. I've seen you do all these walks. I've been amazed by it. It's blown my mind. Charles, he said, man, what's next? And the, and the reporter says, I guarantee you, you could do that with a person in the wheelbarrow. And he says, you know what? You're right. Jump in. Here was the guy's response. He definitely didn't get in. Right? <laughs> but here's, here was his response. I can. I believe you can do it. He said, but I don't believe you can actually, I don't believe you enough to actually get in the wheelbarrow. That's a lot of Christians, man. God, I believe what, I believe what I, I've heard so many, God, Josh, I believe what you said. I believe what you said. I believe what you said. But I don't, I don't believe it enough to put that thing down. I don't believe it enough to, to turn that TV show off. I don't believe it enough to, to trust you with my, I don't believe it enough to give when you tell me to give to that person. I don't believe it enough to do it then, but, 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 but I believe it enough to watch the show. Walk with me this morning, this evening, whatever time it is. I've been locked up for two weeks. I've lost all track of time. So I'll just have to hang with me, man. Right, he did all this, man. Listen, Peter got out of the boat. Peter got out of the boat, stepped into the waves, stepped into the wind, and we read stuff like that. We're like, man, I want to have a miraculous life. Man, I want to experience the power of God. I hear that all the time. But most of us are too freaked out to ever even come close to getting out of the boat. So we stay in the safety of the boat. Why? Because I can control it in here. But if we get out of the boat, man, we have no control at that point. We are living in total, absolute, trusting faith in the one that called us out of the boat in the first place. Listen, family care has never been in debt, never will be in debt. If God quits providing, I want out of it. Because that's the only reason that we're in it. God continues to provide year after year after year after year, man. He continues to bless. I can either walk on the water in that saying, God, I refuse to let one worry. I refuse to stress one moment. I keep my integrity. I don't get lazy. God, and I know that you can, you will provide. Right? I know that. I can either walk on water saying, God, my eyes are on you. Just keep, I'll keep doing what you tell me to do, and I'll say what you tell me to say, and you just keep providing, and we'll keep going. Or I can say, man, I don't know about this. Man, we have in the budget this year what we want to do, man. We've never raised that much money ever. Not even in three years that we need to raise to be able to build this building and, and do all these things, God. We've never even done that in three years. How are we supposed to accomplish this? And I believe the Lord spoke to my heart in, in a time frame. And God, how are we going to do it? I could stress over it. I could worry. I just said, God, here's how I'm going to do it. I know how to travel and speak. We'll get a team together. You girls will do a skit. We'll sing a song. People will be moved. Part of me says, here, I know how to do that. And then the other part of me where God says, I just need you to do what I've called you to do and trust me for the rest. And I'm going to provide. And I'm going to provide. See, it's not easy even, even someone is standing up here that looks like there's great faith or, or whatever it looks like, man. No matter where you go and you see people out there that speak and get singled out for a specific calling, man, we have to trust God with everything or else I want out. I even mean of this this whole this whole life, man. Without trusting in the grace and the mercy and the power of God, I've experienced it the other way. And there is no victory. There is no winning stories. There is no small victories. There are no testimonies. There is nothing good when I walk lacking trust in God, man. It's nothing but destruction and it's broken, man. In Mark's gospel, if you find yourself in this message at all, man, I want to encourage you, you're not alone in it, right? I'm not alone in my faith struggles that I look at in Mark's gospel chapter 9. Mark 9, verse 22. We have a story of a dad and he brings his son to Jesus to be healed. And his son was, was possessed by a demonic spirit. 
And the disciples tried to cast the demon out and they were unable to do it. And Jesus was somewhat frustrated with their lack of faith. Right? Jesus is frustrated. It's in Mark 9, verse 22. Right? Jesus was frustrated with their lack of faith. And the dad brings him to Jesus and he says this. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus looks at him and he says, What? Sorry, if you could do anything, I can picture him saying, if you could do anything. Man, if you knew who I just, who I just showed him, man, if you go ask the woman at the well. Right? Go ask some of the ones that I've touched, man. If, man, he goes down and says, Anything, man, anything is possible for one who believes. Anything is possible for one who trusts. Anything is possible for him who believes that God is able to do it through him and in him. You say walking on water, Peter walked on water because all things are possible when we trust God and we're obedient. But trusting and obeying, as that opening scripture said, trusting and obeying. Why? Look, somebody say, because I'm a control freak. <laughs> because we struggle with that sometimes, man. Three of us said that. Thank y'all for being honest. Everybody else scared to death to admit that. Scared to death to admit you may have a control problem, man. Man, and, and, and I know it's tough to look at, but it's something that the Lord said you have to look at in your life. Because if you want to do the miraculous, if you want to see the miraculous, if you want to grow in your faith, you have to learn to trust me in ways that you haven't before. You have to learn how to get those brushes where you've been holding on to those brushes. Even when I expose and show you a new one that you haven't surrendered yet, you just got to learn how to surrender and say, God, here it is. Paint something beautiful. God, here it is. Do something beautiful, man. Man, if you can do anything, anything is possible for them who believe. And, 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 and the boy's father explained immediately. He said, I do believe. He said, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, Jesus. But help me come over my unbelief. I love this passage and why? Because my faith is imperfect. I don't have perfect faith. Right? There's, there's areas that, 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 that are flawed. There's areas that are lacking. There's areas that I need to work on and grow in. So do you, man. But I love that in the Scripture, God's Word gives me permission to believe in God and it asks Him to help me where I'm struggling with my belief, man. God, I trust You. But, man, I see that budget and help me to trust You. God, I trust You. You see those pictures. And there was times where, where Kate and honestly, I said, God, I trust you. And I know you're a miracle worker, but I need you to move in a way that supersedes just the normal person that we're meeting with. I need you to come down from heaven, and I need that power, man, to move in her life in a mighty way. I believe, God, but help my unbelief if there's anything in me that isn't believing, man. We're able to do that. God's Word gives us permission. I believe. Help me become, help me overcome my, my unbelief. I want to trust you, God, that I sort of do. But I have a tr hard time trusting you all the way. And I want you to get honest today. I want you to call it out. And if you have a piece of pen and a paper, use that. If you have your phone, use that. If you want to take a mental note, if you don't have either, use that, man. But I want you to get to a place where you call this garbage out. Where you call this thing out, man. For every one of you that's listening to them, there's, there's something. I want you to think about it. Is there something? That you can think about that you're white knuckling like I talked about, then you're having a hard time letting go of. 